good morning, everyone. Okay. The topic for today is the principle of plant physiology, plant states, and coping with water scarcity. So today, our speaker is Dr. Pitawat Vishayadip. His academic discipline with special, uh, uh, special expertise are plant physiology, plant biochemical processes, secondary metabolism, and physiological processes under stressful conditions. Currently, he is working in academic section as an agricultural research officer in rice department and also be a special instructor in some universities and college. In terms of working at the policy level, he is a subcommittee in the Committee of Agriculture and Cooperative Parliament, a member and assistant secretary of the development of Smart Agriculture Working Group, a member of Smart Farming Demonstration Working Group of the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, and a member of Smart Agricultural Platform Development Working Group of the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives. And now is the time to listen to the lecture from Dr. Pitowat. Please give us the lecture for today. Thank you very much for your nice introduction on me. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, in this session, I think maybe it's quite hard for you because I heard that all of you have a background on irrigation engineering or something like that, right? But um, to clarify this topic, uh, the background that we need to use is absolutely different anyway. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, in this course, uh, we will not go this gut in depth. Uh, we will look around about this topic and the point I need from my talking is I can give you some idea to be like a, a food for thought in irrigation management. Mm. Okay. Let's go to our topic, the principle of plant physiology, plant stress, and coping with water scarcity. Um, the principle of plant stress, uh, plant physiology, especially plant stress, maybe can help you to answer the question that Professor Vara would ask you in the first session after opening ceremony. Um, in, in that session, I listened, maybe not all the course, but in, in the introduction of Professor Warawood, I, I heard that he asked you some question, right? Like uh, when to irrigate, how much water should be applied, how to apply water efficiency, irrigation, water requirement, and probably respond to water. And I hope that uh, some idea from plant physiology and plant stress can help you to like uh, clarify that question like a better better to to answer that question. Uh, maybe you can answer those questions without the idea on plant physiology. Anyway, I think if you know something on plant physiology processes, you maybe can answer it better. Okay. In our topic, the principle of plant physiology, plant stress, and coping with water scarcity. In this figure, um, I, I think it shows about the relationship between plant and water. You can see a droplet in the margin of leaf of plant. And to clarify the topic, I think the main question that we have to answer is how our water and 
plant relate or the most specific one how plant use water the speaker show about the process in which water seeps out at the tip and tip of plant leaves from xylem um the main uh, the main water transported to in plant normally extra water escape through the thin hole in the plant leaves and stem uh, that hole we call stomata it, like at the um, technical term one is uh, composed of two gut cells in the plant leaf. This picture shows that how much plant do water need, uh, do, do plant need. In the night time, when water requirement of almost plant go down, plant root also still up pump the water in the plant and make this process occur that we call cutation. A droplet of water come out from the leaves at the like a leaf margin. And water is the most limiting abiotic factor that uh, plant need to grow and, and like uh, relate to productivity. And the <clears throat> principal determinant of vegetation distribution worldwide. Uh, the remainder passes through plant direct into the atmosphere. A process referred as transpiration. Uh, the, the water come into plant by plant root and go through the plant body and go out in the plant leaf to the atmosphere. So the transpiration is like a very important of uh, if we want to know uh, how much water do plant need. It depends on how much water that plant transpirate. And before we answer the question, how water do plant, uh, like uh, the water and plant related, I think we have two questions to clarify before. The first one, what is plant? Um, this question may be like, uh, if we answer in our daily life, it may be not difficult, right? Maybe if we go to the supermarket or the market, we can identify which one is plant, which, which one is not. Anyway, if you want to identify it in like an academic or scientific answer, it may be quite difficult to, to say which one is plant or not. Uh, in the left, uh, left figure, now, like a scientist, classify organism into three domains, archaea, eukarya, and bacteria. Maybe like archaea is not famous one in our day life, it's like an ancient bacteria in, in another part of bacteria, but not, not same with the bacteria that we know in our daily life. And another kingdom, we, we classify organism into five kingdoms. Monora, Protista, Plantae, Fungi, and Animalia. You know, for kingdom, except Monora uh, under Jukaya domain, you know, Protista, Plantae, Fungi, and Animalia. And Plantae is one kingdom, it's the five kingdom of organism, of all organisms. Until now, the five kingdom classification is still famous and plant are organisms in kingdom plantae. And if we give a kind of academic definition of plant, you know, plant are mainly multicellular organisms. I you know, mean, <laughs> the organism that composed of more than one cell and predominantly photosynthetic eukaryotes. Uh, this, word, uh, this sentence means the cell of plant have a nucleus inside and uh, plant use photosynthesis to, to, to live. And in depth, the cell wall of plant, uh, the, the plant cell and animal, and animal cell have a, a big difference in the, the cell com components. Yeah. One of cell components, plant have a cell wall and animal, animal 
have not. Anyway, some other kingdom like uh, Fang Chai also have civil war too, but the, the component of civil war are different. If it's still in one kingdom, it should have a uh, cellulose civil war inside. And finally, uh, the, the important one of plan is have a life cycle as alternation of generation. This one is also like a, something that quite difficult to understand. Like if uh, we focus on human, all of our lifetime after fertilization, the, our body have the, like a two, like a du duplicate of DNA. Like a, we have two, two copy of DNA all of our life in animal. But in in plant, uh, in plant body, they have like a the switch between one copy of DNA and two copy of DNA in each like a uh, state of plant life. Uh, so this is the academic de definition of plant, like a <laughs> very complicated, right? But anyway. I think if we can like uh, identify which one is planned and which, which one is, is not, maybe enough for, for learning about the plant physiology. And about the plant physiology, this is the word like uh, the te technical term one. Uh, plant physiology is like uh, the subset of botany, botany when we talk about the botany, botany talk all of scientific, uh, sci like a plant side, all of plant side. And maybe we use the term of botany, and plant physiology is the subset of the, of the plant side. Uh, plant physiology usually talking about uh, the function in plant that can like make plant go grow up. Since germination, grow up, like uh, flowering, seeding, all of life cycle, that all, all process called plant physiology. And the example of the fundamental process, processes, such as photosynthesis, maybe if we're talking about the plant physiology, the, the very dominant plant metabolism that we should know is photosynthesis because it's like a very important function that plant use for for leaf photosynthesis respiration uh, plant nutrition plant hormone function something uh, like this is uh, plant physiology and the next question hmm what is water? I think the question, uh, this question is much easier than, than the first question, right? <laughs> I think all of you know that uh, if you want to talk about water, water is a molecule that composed of an oxygen, make a covalent bond, a single bond with hydrogen, right? And these two atoms have a property, uh, an important property one, Electronegativity that's not equal. Oxygen have the electronegativity much more than hydrogen, so the, the uh, water is a polar molecule. The oxygen become a negative polar, and hydrogen become a positive polar. And this two polar between two atom or more, more than that uh, between the different atom have a, like a small force between the negative polar and positive polar. And we call that small force as a hydrogen bond. And this bond like mm, give water have a very special, a lot of special property that uh, make a water become like a, a universal solvent in all organisms. Uh, so therefore, how do we manage our limit, uh, limit water? The main topic of this course is 
development of agricultural resilience capacity through water management with climate smart irrigation system, right? So we may be focused only on water management in agricultural section. And agriculture or farming is the practice of cultivating plants and livestock. Agriculture was the key development of the first uh, rise of human civilization, whereby farming the domesticated species created food su supply that enable people to live. Uh, like a, we can make a city because uh, in the past, before agriculture, human the human live by hunting and gathering and the food supply not enough to, to make like a, the big social like a, a city after we can do agriculture, we can have enough food to make a big social as a city. So we can say that agriculture is the, the reason that a human can rise, can make human civilization. And the history of agriculture began thousands of years ago after gathering wide grains, uh, beginning at least uh, 100,000 years ago. Nascent farmers began to plant them around um, about 10,000, uh, around that 10,000 years ago. Uh, pig, sheep, and cattle were domesticated over also 10,000 years ago too. For thousands of years, agricultural development was very slow. If you see this timeline, you can see that maybe more than 10,000 years ago, we, we like a start agriculture that we can call Neolithic Revolution or the first agricultural revolution in our world. And nearly 10,000 years, maybe around this 10,000 years, we have a second agricultural revolution in the 17th century in the British agricultural revolution. But the third revolution, the gap between the first and the second from um, 10,000 years ago to the century to uh, century, uh, the 17th century, and the gap of the second agricultural revolution to the third agricultural revolution is very small um, from the 17th century. We have second agricultural revolution, and then we have the third agricultural revolution that we maybe also heard that as the Green Revolution in 1940, like a, a hundred years uh, between the two, uh, the second and the third revolution, because like uh, we have a baby boomer in our world and the population grow up very fast and that time we had a problem that we cannot produce the food enough for our population. We try a lot to increase, how to increase um, the productivity in agricultural sector. And today, uh, maybe we will face that problem again and uh, both uh, like uh, agriculture, agriculturalists and scientists hope that we can buy some new technology that can make the fourth agricultural revolution to solve this problem. Uh, the famous one that we need, uh, we, we, we hope that it can become a, the fourth agricultural revolution is the, the use of new technology, like uh, the smart agriculture. This is the problem that I, I, I said, maybe we will face this, the, pro the problem of food again.
this is the the paper um in maybe published in nature in 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 the journal named nature i i think maybe you 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 heard that name of paper uh the famous paper one in the in the paper that calculate that maybe food supply will not enough for the population that increased in 2050 but this paper published before the covid crisis so maybe this crisis may be postponed, but I think maybe only postponed, not like a <laughs> disappear. Maybe after 2050, we will we will face uh, the, the 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 problem of food um, scarcity, and this is one problem that we have to think that how we can increase the productivity in the agriculture sec sector to to like a make the food enough for our population in our world and, oh sorry okay and water plays a crucial role in the life of plant that's why we we have to to talking about about uh water in agricultural sector uh okay we back to our topic today uh, plant physiology and plant stress and why we usually talk about only plants not animal when we talk talking about the management of water in in agricultural sector uh, when, uh, of course, the first person that I'm a specialist in plant <laughs> physiology, not animal physiology, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, the main reason is for mammal or livestock. When we're talking about agriculture, agriculture, we 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 usually focus on two living things, right? Plant and animal. We, we call plant in in agricultural as crop and call animal in agricultural as livestock uh, for mammal or livestock what is the medium in circular system in the blood mm -hmm. which is a closed system right so the livestock uh, they lost water only by excretion such as sweet or urine excrement just a small amount compared with plant why in plant normally water from soil going into plant from root and transport via tissue to leaf and finally volatile vola, uh, volatilize to the air the four plants generally consume much more water than those of animal for example in paddy rice, our stable food in Asia, the amount of water that's used in the rice production is about 7,000 to 80,000 cubic meters per hectare per crop. Fast water direct consumption of daily cow is only 170 liters per day. Therefore, if we use the same amount of water, the water that we use in paddy field can feed about 360 daily cow. That we can say that uh, a lot of water, a lot, uh, a big amount of water that plant use more than animal use. But water play crucial rule in the life of plant for every gram of organic matter made by plant approximately 500 uh, 500 gram of water is absorbed by root and transported 
through the plant's body and lost to the atmosphere. Even slight imbalance of this flow can cause water deficit and severe malfunction of many cellular processes. Thus, every plant must delicately balance its uptake and loss of water. This balancing is a serious challenge for land plants to carry on photosynthesis. They need to draw carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but doing so it causes some water loss and feed dehydration. What to make up most of the mass of plant cells, as we can readily appreciate if you look at the microscopic section of metro plant cells, each cell contains a lot of water-filled vacuole. Vacuole is the organelle inside the plant and like a take the big plants in the plant cell, maybe like 80% of plant cell is a vacuole that contain a huge amount of water. And in such cells, uh, the cytoplasm make up to, uh, about 5 to 10 of cell volume remainder yes, vacuole. What a typical con constitute 80 to 90% of mass of uh, plant tissue. A lot of body in plant cell and what in uh like a contain in plant and do a lot of function in plant since um a medium in plant cell uh plant use body as a solvent to, to solve anything yeah, in plant life to, as a medium of chemical reaction in plant cell, and the source of photosynthesis, the source of the carbohydrate synthesis, synthesis or any other organic synthesis also use water in the biochemical and yeah, plant use the water like a to solve mineral in soil and uptake into plant. Plant need water as a medium to do that process. And because like uh, when the water change the status from liquid to gas, it use like uh, so much specific heat to, to do that process. So plant also use water to release the heat from plant. That we can say that plant do a lot of things in uh, the, the water do a lot of things in plant life. That's why plant continuously absorb a lost water all day. Uh, in like a photosynthesis, that the main process that we usually talk when we're talking about plant physiology, uh, maybe we can say that that is the most important one in the plant life photosynthesis. Photosynthesis normally do not use water so much, maybe like a 2% to 5% that uh, the water that plant absorb go into the photosynthesis process. Uh, almost water that plant absorb, plant also release into the atmosphere by the transpiration process because of like a, that two process, the, the last two processes they talk uh, to, to dissolve, uh, to, to solve the minerals and absorb into the plant and to release the heat from plant body. That's why the reason that plant continues to absorb a lost body. And this is uh, the, the, the function, the mechanism that plant 
um, absorb water from the soil into plant root. Uh, plant absorb water from the soil by the water potential, um, the chemical potential of water from from the higher one to the lower one, and that's why so plant also keep a lot of solute inside plant body to make the water potential in plant lower than in soil. So water can absorb mm -hmm. into the root of plant. And the major uh, part of root that plant can absorb water, or can uptake water, it not so much far from the root tip. If you see the graph in the right top one, uh, about 10 centimeter distance from root tip is the main area that plant can absorb water in, into the soil. Uh, uh, so, sorry, in, in, into the root. That's why when when we like a study about the plant physiology or morphology, that we should know where is the root area of each plant. The root area of plant maybe depend on on species. So if you want to know how to like uh, do the good agricultural practice in plant, we should know where is the root area in the soil of plant. Normally, in, in general, if you know the root area, 10 centimeter of the root tip is the best area that plant can uptake the water. If it Talking about rice, mm. the root area of rice is about um, 30 meter, uh, 30 centimeters to 50 centimeter from soil surface, yeah, depend on cultivar. So if we know that we can like uh, know the level of water in the paddy field that how much it can go lower from the soil surface. And this is the water potential that you can see in the soil about minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 in, in the normal soil. And in plant um, tissue or plant organ, maybe plant usually keep the water potential uh, slightly lower than those of soil, maybe minus 6 or minus it around this to like a uh, help plant can uptake water from soil into plant tissue mm -hmm. and the air mm -hmm. in the outside air if we um, focus on the relative humidity as about uh, 50 percent the water potential is about minus minus 100 so water can go through uh, plant plant uh, tissue and can go since soil through plant tissue and go out uh, the leaf into plant uh, uh, into outside air by the water potential level. Uh, This two graph will show the relative about the view of productivity and water ability. The, the, the left one, the relation between corn yield with the water ability. So you can see that when the water availability, availability increase, the 
corn yield also increase maybe until this point. After that, it may be like at the stable one and productivity is also maybe relate to annual precipitation. When annual precipitation increase, productivity of plant also increase until some point that maybe annual precipitation, precipitation increase, but it cannot affect to productivity. In a lot of physiology of organisms, it like a, also do the relation something like this. When some factor increase, the yield also increase until some point and after that it also stable and if we can like uh, collect the data after this point after stable if we have a lot like a uh, too much factor the growth or the yield may be decreased and Therefore, we can like uh, conclude that water is important in the life of plant because it makes up the mass trick, the medium, and which most biochemical processes essential for life take place. Uh, this the water potential of plant under various growing conditions. And sensitivity of various physiological processes to water potential, the intensity of um uh sorry, uh this this is the main um this is the main like uh plant physiology that relate to water state and the X bar uh the, the X exist. Uh, show about the water potential you can say that about some physiological processes such as cell expansion uh, cell expansion is very important for plant growth mm -hmm. if plant wanna growth it have to expand the cell and this process very sensitive to to water state that if like a water quite low and the water pit water potential quite low it uh, impact on cell expansion very rapidly also wall synthesis and protein synthesis and after that if water potential also go down uh, another physiological processes such as photosynthesis and stomatal conductance also disrupt and finally, if like uh, after this point, we can that confess the 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 stress, plus the first the the factor that plant do not need. If the water also go down, it may be like a uh, plant may be synthesized abscisic acid at accumulation. This one we can call like uh, the plant hormone that can lead plant know to respond to the, the lower the very low water state in the soil and ask plant to adapt for the that environment to respond to that environment to, to have some adaptation to live in that environment. So in that environment that the the factor that not suitable for plant leaf we call that environment as plant stress. Yeah. So maybe you, I'm not sure that you ever heard about plant stress before or not. But plant stress is like a the subset of the plant physiology. If it's talking that. Uh, plant physiology is the function that um, the, the plant function, uh, the function in the plant life. Uh, plant stress is the plant physiology that not 
that the environment not suitable for plant and one need to change the physiology need to adapt to survive in the not suitable environment And as you see, the line of evolution of plant here, the problem of water is one of the main obstacle in the evolution from aquatic to terrestrial plant. Our organisms origin in the sea, in the ocean, that is the origin of organisms. So when plant want to evolution uh, from the aquatic environment to terrestrial environment, water is one of the main obstacles in this line of evolution. And temperature and oxidative issue it also follow after the water obstacle. Oxidative tissue or oxidative stress is a stress that's caused by oxygen. I'm not sure that you have heard about this kind of stress or not in that anyway, but um, oxygen is a toxic molecule one. But we organism like uh, adapt to live with this toxic one and can use to make energy like a fuel. Uh, yeah. We use like a fossil fuel to drive the car, but the fuel is a toxic metal one. Oxygen is also it like a very sensitive, sensitive to, to make a reaction with other molecules. And we uh, do a lot to evolution to live with organism. And okay, now we been we can use organism uh, use oxygen like uh, the source of fuel one in our daily life. So now we can like uh, grow better than uh, the living thing that do not use oxygen. Anyway, the, the point that um, we, we will focus is about the water stress because when organisms evolution from the aquatic to, to the terrestrial, we lost a lot of water source. So plants need to find the water to like uh, to in, into the plant body to, to maintain the water state that is in plant. This is like a, the main problem that plant have to solve if plant want to go to the terrestrial. Okay. Um, and as I, I say that, that the stress is the physiology or the function of organism that in the suit un, unsuitable this is the, the, the first scientist that used the term stress. He is a doctor. So the first term that we use stress in, in living, living thing, in organisms. Uh, first, we use in animal. And after that, we use in plant. Because plant being a sign, <laughs> plant cannot move. So plant, plants cannot go out from the unsuitable environment that plants have to try a lot to, to face with the unsuitable factor and plants have to adapt a lot of things when environmental change. And what does stress mean to agriculturalists? Uh, 
uh, plants have involved mechanism that allow them to adapt and survive period of non-ideal growth condition. As you see in the last slide, SSI organisms, plants have to cope with stresses both biotic and abiotic environment. Plants experience jet or high light level, sub-zero, low or high temperature, drought, flooding, high salinity, inorganic nutrient imbalance, infection, predation, natural man-made toxic compound, all of which can stress food if they persist. And a mild stress may activate cell metabolism. Um, when we talk about the plant stress, the first time maybe we think the stress is a negative physiology that suppress plant growth and development of productivity. Anyway, if we plant face like uh, the small small stress, we can call that a mild stress, can activate the cell metabolism also, maybe like uh, if we give a little stress, it can help plant grow better than in the ideal environment. Increase the physiological activity of plant and does not cause any damage even at long duration. Such my stress, simulating stress is favorable for the plant. Biotic and abiotic stresses in crop a major hurdle in attending potential yield worldwide. Among abiotic stress, drought, salinity, temperature, and heavy metal accumulation are major environmental stresses which adverse affect plant growth and productivity. In addition, biotic stress, biotic stress means the stress caused from living things like a pest, like an insect, like a, some animal that damage plant you know, that we call biotic stress. Biotic stress primarily uh, plant decrease, plant disease are significant constraint to the production of about 25% of food and fiber crops. We go with biotic and abiotic stress. It is the paramount significant to understand plant response to this stress that disturb homeost homeostatic equilibrium at cellular and molecular level. And plants do like a three, uh, three different types of uh, plant adaptation for, for, for stress acclimation. The compound involved in acclimation process mm -hmm. Like uh, plant synthesize antioxidant and osmoprotectant when plant face stress, or byproduct of stress, the substance that generate with the distribution of normal homeostasis, and the signal transduction molecule to to like uh, tell the other organ that do not face the stress yet to know that now plant. Uh, plant body and this stress, like a pretty different type you know, that plant do about the metabol metabolomic or the different type of the compound that plant synthesis and this stress. And how to know plant stress or not? Normally, stress is biological terms mean division of the mo no, uh, like a division of the normal physiology, development and function. So it may be like a quite hard to, to tell that which point is plant under stress, which point that plant grow in normal, right? <laughs> it it, it, it depends on the response of plant. So maybe we use like uh, the 90% that growth of plant or the yield reduce more than 90% that we can call that 
that environment that not suitable for for plant growth, and we can call that plant grow under stress. Evidence indicates the biotic stress can cause about twenty to thirty percent loss if we test the biotic stress. The average of the loss is about twenty to thirty percent, but if we face the abiotic stress, especially drought, the due loss can estimate up to 60 to 80 percent. That so we can say that abiotic stress is very serious for the production in agriculture and drought or water deficit is the main mm -hmm. the major one of the, the abiotic stress that we can face in in agriculture mm -hmm. after lower than 90 percent we can call the stress and when plant face the stress mm -hmm. if if plant not sensitive if plant sensitive <laughs> plant maybe will go die or reduce the growth or or um lost their productivity but if it can best with that stress environment to major strategy for surviving adverse environment condition stress avoidance or stress tolerance Avoidant mechanism is the most obvious in warm blood animal that simply to move away. We can call avoidant is move away from this from the stress environment to to find a new environment that suitable for growing. But plant cannot move, right? Yeah. So avoidant in plant, plant do like a make the plant inside environment suitable. Oh, okay, if the soil, the water in soil go down, the moisture is very low, plant avoid them is the mechanism that plant find more water and collect in the plant body. And some plant do something like this. Uh, the, uh, the dominant one is cactus. Yeah. Cactus do everything. Uh, some some like a some plant can do both avoidance and tolerance. Mm -hmm. Can make the environment inside better by collect more water. Okay. You can see the succulent plants as cactus. Yeah. They collect a lot of water in the in the in the stem. And also, some plants do the tolerance process. And tolerance mechanism mainly in both biochemical and metabolic means, which are turn regulated by gene, like a change the physiological processes. Like some plant can change the the way of photosynthesis. The the photosynthesis. Um, for the, the like a plant scientist, we 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 talk talking about a three three, three kind of photosynth photosynthesis. We we call C three, C four, and chem photosynthesis. <laughs> Maybe like a the, um, the the symbol that uh, plant phys physiologists talking together. But uh, one thing that I want you know like a the normally of plant generally uh, maybe like 80 percent of plant in the world use the very simple photosynthesis the simplest photosynthesis in in this three type that we call c3 photosynthesis c3 photosynthesis as it's simple it use a huge amount of water uh, so some plants can change the way of photosynthesis from C3 to C4 or C3 to CAM that 
maybe like a more complicated but use less water in like a, some environment some plant change permanently they like a after change they have to use c3 or uh, c4 or cam all their life but some plant are not some plant can switch it if, if the water environment is very low they switch to c4 or cam photosynthesis but if water level uh, higher and suitable for it it can switch to go to use C3 photosynthesis, yeah. so with back and to use C3 photosynthesis, like uh, to go back to do like uh, the, the simple one. The effect of climate change on the general environmental have been very significant over the years. And the most, especially in agricultural plants grow in this environment. According to IPCC, stress are incurred on plants as a result of change of climatic conditions of the environment, which has been concluded to be the most influencing factor of the agricultural production at the lowland, mostly occupied by developing con countries. Climate change increased the presence of carbon dioxide in the air and also the temperature of environment. If we focus on only photosynthesis, increase of carbon dioxide can increase the photosynthesis rate because like uh, carbon dioxide is the substrate of photosynthetic biochemical process. But if it can still increase only carbon dioxide, it may be better for plant. But uh, in our real life, when we talk about global warming, it does not increase only carbon dioxide, right? The increase of carbon dioxide also increases the temperature and the increase of temperature change the rain petrol, the rain pattern, uh, the increase of temperature make like a uh, heat stress to plant. So overall, although global warming caused by the increase of carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is the source of the most important process in plant, but the overall, the global warming uh, the negative effect mm -hmm. to plan also. Climate change is now recognized as one of the major threats for plant, planet Earth in the 21st century. According to the IPCC report, instrumental observation over past 157 years show that temperature at the surface have risen globally with a significant variation for the global average forming in the last uh, century has occurred too fast from the 1910 to the 1940 about 0 0.35 degrees Celsius and more strongly from 1972 to present about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. And it is now accepted that drought in future post at a threat to climate sensitive economic sectors, specific quality agriculture and health. Uh, therefore, this is, uh, this is select. The assessment of potential impact to climate change on crop production and various skills. This will help develop measures to reduce the agricultural vulnerability and thereby secure livelihood of those who depend on agriculture. 
So uh, this is the drought type, the type of drought is normally classified into uh, and to fall for types of drought, right? Agricultural drought, meteorological drought, meteorological drought, and socioeconomic drought. Maybe you like uh, usually use the meteorological drought and hydrological drought, right? And this two types of drought also cause the agricultural drought. When we face the meteorological drought or we face the hydrological drought, we also face agricultural drought also. And this is the map that uh, can show that the global warming make drought can like uh, occur in any part of our world. The blue one is like a current drought. Current drought is like a drought in, in this century and the last century or historical, uh, historical drought, mm -hmm. the drought in the part that like uh, the big drought mm -hmm. that now we, we can face this problem in any part of our world. Also in Thailand, uh, maybe in, in Thailand, we have a lot of rainfall, but like uh, some, some year, um, although we, Thai, we, we call like a drought year in Thailand, but the drought year in Thailand also have a lot of precipitation. Uh, normally, I'm not sure about the, the number of precipitation, but I, I think normally of, of the precipitation in Thailand is about uh, 1,200 to 1,600 some millimeter. Mm -hmm. If, if I, I don't misunderstand, I'm not sure. And our drought year, maybe like uh, the precipitation is quite a amount, like 900 to 10,000 millimeter. It, it's still much compared with some country, but uh, some year we can face both drought and flooding in the same year, like last two years. Uh, we faced drought before and after that, a lot of rain, a lot of heavy rain become and go flooding. So with the global warming change the pattern and we we maybe can face the, the stress like uh, easier. And if we want to like, uh, classify the drought, we can classify drought in, into like a basic koi, four basic you know, four koi, the permanent, the seasonal, the unpredictable, and invisible drought. I think the very hard one to, to do in agriculture it is invisible drought. Maybe we like uh, treat the water, but the invisible drought maybe can still occur because they lost a huge, huge amount of water because of temperature. The high temperature increase the high rate of evaporation because plant want to release the heat from plant. So we so plant need to use the 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 transpiration process to reduce that high temperature. So maybe we still give the water to plant so much, but invisible drought also occur because of the high temperature in our daily life. And, but uh, the other three, I think now our technology can, can help us to, to solve like a, the permanent drought. We can like a, use 
some technology uh, to to grow up plant. Uh, you can I guess search in how to Israel cultivation to solve this problem about the permanent drought, the seasonal drought also, and unpredictable drought. Maybe quite difficult to to predict drought in like a country in tropical because the the, the rain the the cloud go very fast so maybe it's quite difficult to to predict the rainfall and the effect of drought on plants we can say that we uh, can first if if uh, the plant first drought Sixth thing that usually occur when plant under drought, the water stays up in plant, the nutrients stay up, the biochemical processes assimilate, partitioning, oxidative damage, and finally, uh, crop yield, crop growth and yield. For water stay up. Relative water content, leaf water potential, stomata, stomata resistance, rate of transpiration, leaf temperature, and can canopy temperature are important characteristics that influence plant water relation. The relative content of wheat leaf was prior initial during leaf development and decreased as dry matter accumulate a leaf mature. Obviously, Water stressed wheat and rice plants have lower relative water content than non stressed one. Export to this plant drought stress substantially decreased the leaf water potential. Relative water content and transpiration rate will a concomitant increase leaf temperature. Um, Nutrient state in the nutrient state as as we we talking before uh, water when when water absorbed by plant not only water that go inside the plant nutrient that dissolve in the soil uh, also go together with water so when plant fast with the water deficit plant cannot absorb water into the plant body. Nutrient is also blocked. The nutrient is also cannot go inside the plant plant body. So when plant faced with the water deficit, it also decreased water uh, when it decreased water availability and the drought, it also generate the block uh, the decreased nutrient uptake also. The biochemical process. Um, a lot of biochemical process that shift, that, that have to shift when plant uh, grow under water deficit. Mm -hmm. As we're talking before, water do like a, a medium mm -hmm. in the plant cell. So every biochemical process have to like uh, the all biochemical processes can do in the water environment. Water environment. So when water like a uh, go down, all biochemical maybe um, change have to change if it can. The cellular response to to water deficit in include the loss of thicker pressure, change in the mem membrane fluidity and composition, change in water activity, uh, and also lead concentration, uh, and protein-protein, uh, protein-lipid interaction. For following the early activation of mutagen stress response. So we can say that uh, every chemical 
disrupt when when water is not enough. Another one, uh, assimilate partitioning. We also press not only limit the size of the source and sink tissue, but the flow and loading. Flow and loading mean like uh, after plant synthesis, the carbohydrate from the leaf, uh, plant need to like uh, transport the, the food in the term of carbohydrate or in the term of sugar into the under part of plant. So after photosynthesis, plant synthesis, the carbohydrate in the leaf, maybe almost plant synthesis, uh, have a photosynthesis in the leaf. After that, plant have to transport the carbohydrate into other parts of plant. Uh, we call that process as flow and loading. And uh, the key uh, of flow and loading is also water. If plant want to send something to some part and need to use the water to help to send that thing to another part of plant and can send the carbohydrate from leaf to root, from leaf to stem, or to, from leaf to new shoot uh, by send it with together with water. So when plant face the drought, mm -hmm. the assimilate partitioning is also dis disrupt. And oxidative damage. Uh, this process can occur after like a uh, drought go more severe and disrupt some process, some biochemical process. Like uh, the biochemical process cannot go normal. That oxygen maybe can go to accept the energy from light in the photosynthesis. Normally, in photosynthesis, um, they have a lot of chemical that accept the energy from light after chlorophyll. But if plant go drought, the chemical maybe cannot, or we have not enough chemical to, to accept the energy that chlorophyll capture. So in that time, maybe oxygen can accept that energy from chlorophyll. And in, in that state that we can say that it can make oxidative damage to the plant because when, when oxygen accepts some energy or some electron mm -hmm. from the, the photosynthesis biochemical, we call that oxygen as a reactive oxygen species and like a, it very sensitive to to make a bio uh, to to make a reaction with the compound all of the bio compound in the plant carbohydrate maybe carbohydrate not like a so sensitive but the other important three is very sensitive to reactive oxygen species lipid um, protein and DNA. So under drought, if it cause oxidative damage, we can say that now plant also go stressed and the stress is quite severe right now because the reactive oxygen species, when, when it react with other biomolecule, it lost the property of that biomolecule and that biomolecule bio cannot function. If we react with lipid, lipid is the main component of cell membrane that uh, regulate the, the everything that go inside or outside of plant cell. So like uh, if we lost the cell membrane function, um, maybe in the same way we lost the, the guard or the, the screening of 
everything that can go in or out. If another biomolecule as protein, protein like a do a lot of thing. And we can say that do maybe almost of thing in the plant function. So when uh, reactive oxygen species react with protein, it means it lost a lot of metabolism, uh, lost a lot of uh, everything function, every function in, in, in the cell. And the last one, DNA, uh, if reactive oxygen species react with DNA, it causes the mutation, right? DNA is the like uh, the genetic data. And so if reactive oxygen species react with DNA, DNA change, it means uh, cause the mutation. And if uh, the drought make plant go to this state that is oxidative damage, we can call that now we under the plant stress absolutely. And the last one, that the thing that the farmer concern a lot uh, after plant growing under um, water deficit, plant growth and yield are reduced. And this is very like a significant for farmer, right? When the crop growth and yield reduced, it means the income of farmer also reduced also. So uh, in in agriculture, if if uh, the state that is not too bad, uh, we try a lot uh, to like a help the crop that does not like uh, go to this state, uh, how to like uh, improve the growth and yield under stress or how to like uh, manage water. If, if we, we, we talk in the term of government and we know that now this year is a drought year, we have to, to plan to have a plan how to manage our water to to like a suitable with the farmer that can that, that they can grow uh, the plant or the crops normally how to reduce the water use but maintain the growth and the yield mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, the change of root that i i like a uh, Want you to see like a uh, if if plant go under drought condition, I forget which plant that I take <laughs> this picker. But uh, can if you see in the A B C picker on the top, this is we call the morphology. Morphology is the structure of plant that we we see from outside. Mm. You can see that morphology of root of plant change when plant drought. The A is for water, and the like uh, the thing like uh, the white needle uh, around the root we call root hair. That is a part of epidemics of plant root that grow to uh, like a uh, grow into the soil to increase the the root surface. The root surface is very important for plant to absorb water and uh, root hair grow into the soil to increase the, 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 the surface, the root surface. And as you see the A figure and the well water root, they have some root hair, right? And the B figure, that that figure that um, plant face um, drought for fourteen days, dry down for fourteen days. As we talked before, the my stress, my stress is not too much stress, can activate plant to do a lot of things to prepare to to face with stress. So. 
when dry down for 14 days, you know, plant increase root hair to increase the the root surface to increase the surface that a plant can absorb water. But if the stress become more severe, in the sea thicker, as you can see, uh, 28 days dry down, root hair still disappear, like a, the root maybe like a go die. It cannot still alive and take the water inside. And if we make a cross section, I mean like a section, the root and looking inside, you can see like a, the pore mm -hmm. is go up. Mm -hmm. This is not not adaptation for 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 absorb more water. In in general, the small pore can absorb the water better than the big pore. But the pore that you can see inside is the damage of of the oxidative stress. That's we we're talking before, right? And the drought condition, maybe oxygen can absorb some energy and become a very sensitive, uh, sensitive molecule one and can damage to a lot of biomolecule. And this is one of an example. You can see that 14 day die ground and 28 day die ground have a big pore in, inside the root. And this cause from the, the action of reactive oxygen species. It react with the, the, the cell wall, with the cell and the cell wall of plant root. So that give the plant root become a big pore inside. As, as we talking before, plant respond and adapt to survive under drought stress by the introduction of various morphological, biochemical, and physiological processes. Drought tolerance is defined as the ability to grow and grow up and flowering, and this play economic gear under suboptimal water supply. If plant can do this, we can say that this planet toler <clears throat> tolerance to drought. And as, as I talked before, drought stress affects the water relation of plant at cellular, tissue, and organ level, causing specific as well as unspecific reaction, damage, and adaptation reaction. To cope with the drought, tolerant plant initiate different mechanism against water deficit, which need to be investigated in further detail in the following section, mechanism of drought tolerance at different level are presented. Plant drought tolerance involve change at full plant, tissue, physiological and molecular level, manifestation of single or combination of inheritance changes determine the ability of plant to sustain itself and the limit moisture applied. The first one that plant can do for uh, drought adaptation is escape. Maybe this kind of adaptation we cannot use to, to apply in the agricultural system because escape means plant use a small amount of water in the soil in the short term, uh, in the short period that the soil have water to germination, to grow up, to flowering, to seeding before the mo moisture in soil disappear. So plant can like a go through the life cycle in the short term and give the next generation in the soil at the seed because seed like uh, the, the state of plant that need a very low moisture and can can be like a dormant mm -hmm. until 
the seed have the water or the, the moisture again in the next year, it can grow up and do something like this again, go grow up in the short term that the soil have moisture. So we can see the adaptation at this the escape. Normally we can we can found in the desert. So they use the water in the short term when when it's rain. And after that it make a seed and domains in the soil. Another one is avoid dance. Uh, the mechanism that we like uh, talk a little bit before avoid them is morphological adaptation. Uh, adaptation in in the morphology and anatomy to to make plants can store more water inside to make the inner environment. Uh, suitable for plant, a lot of water inside plant, right? So, in in the plant cell, uh, do not face with water deficit. A lot of plant do something like this, and the morphological adaptation of plant to avoid the the water deficit in cell maybe have two two major part. If you want want to collect more water inside. We maybe we maybe can reduce the water loss, or we can gain the water better. Some 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 plan to do, do the first one like a reduce the water loss by the adaptation of stomata, like a change in stomata to reduce the loss of water from that that pore, because stomata is the main uh, the main part of plant that plant lost water so. If plant do, do not, uh, if plant like I don't want to lose water into the air, it have to change the stoma stomata to reduce the water loss. And some plant uh, change the morphology of fruit, like a uh, the deep uh, more deep fruit uh, or more root to find more water. Uh, to to like uh, uptake more water, so each one can can let plant have uh, more water inside. Okay, I think maybe I signal lots about this about the tolerance mechanisms. <clears throat> maybe we. We'll not go in depth about the tolerance mechanism, but if you wanna say like a something tolerance to drought drought tolerance, like a rise in drought tolerance, culture while or something like this, it means like a plant can adapt its biochemical and physio physiological processes inside that can like a tolerate to drought. Okay. Growth stress. Growth stress effect maybe can manage by the production of most appro appropriate plant genotypes. So the first one, if we know that the environment that we the like a uh, can face the drought problem, we maybe choose the species of plants or the cultivar of crops first and that it choose the plant that tolerate to to the drought condition and maybe someone opened the microphone i'm not sure that you want to ask something or not Okay, maybe maybe not right. So another one, if after we, we choose the suitable genetic of organism one, the tolerance species one, we have to adjust 
the agronomic practice um, to to help the drought condition go better. Um, the first one is the select plant to so this is the the job of the breeder that try to find the cultivar of crop uh, of our economic crop that can tolerate it to drought. And if we can choose, I think it may be better that we can choose the tolerance cultivar one to grow if we know that in our area can pass with drought together with like a, to 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 coat the seed with there is some chemical that can help uh, the plant can can tolerate to the drought condition like uh, we acclimate the drought with the the, the mice stress do you remember about the mice stress if we we give the plant and to face with this the little stress it and another one that if it's possible we need to to use the new technology to help like uh, to adjust our program to water the plant if we can like uh, know about the plant physical plant physiology together, I think maybe we can like uh, adjust the water plant and that's suitable more. The main question is how to reduce water consumption in, in uh, surrounding because as uh, assistant professor Subhachaya introduced me in the first, now I still do like a, a research officer in the rice department. So the example that I will give you is the rice peel. Um, so the main question is how to reduce water consumption of paddy rice. I think maybe all of you still know that rice is a staple food in our, in our club, particularly in AG, however, Rice farming requires a lot of water. More than of it is used for rice production. A lot of amount of water that used in rice production. For the production of one kilogram of rice using continuous flooding irrigation, water is required around one to three cubic meters. One to three, one to three cubic meters for only one kilogram of rice. Moreover, but the deficit is significantly more severe as a result of global warming. Therefore, irrigation techniques must be reconsidered. Before we, we ask the farmer to apply the alternative technique, we, we have to ensure that this technique um, have no deleterious effect on plant, right? Hence, I decided to raise field at the system that I want to study to use plant physiology and use plant physiology and plant stress that relate to water status in rice as a decision support data. Like a here, the system that that I want to study is the water balance in the rice field. And if we want to reduce the water input, like we have to ensure that the sub subsystem that the water status or water balance in rice plant have to like uh, suitable. Mm -hmm. If we want to reduce the water in the rice field, we have to ensure that there is no deleterious effect to rice plant. So this is the like uh, I think this 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 is the system that we have to ensure before um, 
launch the alternative irrigation technique for the farmer to do. Before study on the effect of alternative irrigation on plant, we should know before uh, what is uh, what are the characteristics, the characters that sensitive to water status. As you can see here, this is the graph of quantum yield. The, the quantum yield that I measure as photosystem too. Like uh, in the photosynthesis of plant, they have two major photosystem. Yeah. It's photosystem one and photosystem two, but the more important one is photosystem two. Yeah. So a lot of scientists use, usually measure the quantum yield. The quantum yield is like uh, the amount of light that can go to the yield of plant. That so we call quantum yield uh, through the, the, the process uh, photosynthesis. And as you see here, the quantum yield, uh, the parameter that's strongly related to photosynthesis is reduced due to the level of water stress. I, I give you the picture uh, beside the bar, the bar, uh, the bar image. Mm -hmm. The control, uh, you can see the leaf of the control is like a, the, the normal one, <laughs> the, 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 the normal leaf. And level three is mean like a plant under drought and the leaf of plant fall in this level. Like a, we usually give the level of leaf fall into five level, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. uh, three is the middle fall, like a half of plant blade flow, fall, but not, not all mm -hmm. about like a half area of the plant leaf hole, mm -hmm. we call the level three. Mm -hmm. And level five is absolutely full. Mm -hmm. That is the drought mm -hmm. that and plant respond as the level five. Mm -hmm. You can see that the quantum quantum yield reduced together with the drought status. But I think it makes sense if we don't talk about the biochemical process inside, if we only see about the, the morphological, the morphological is this. Okay. Um, if we focus on the morphological, the leaf of control, like I explained fully, and it can absorb light like a hundred percent of the tissue. So it can like uh, use light in the photosynthesis uh, full of the light that they can absorb. But if the leaf fall, the light absorption is the subordinate data. I can call that this is, these are subordinate data except quantum yield. Not only quantum yield that affect by drought or water deficit, a lot of physiological traits such as um, stomatal conductance, the, the first one, GSW is stomatal conductance, is also changed with um, water status too. And also temperature leave, right? Because plants will reduce the heat inside by the um, transpiration. Ah, okay. And also fluorescence and like an electron transfer in, in photosynthesis are also disrupted by water status. Anyway, uh, I think I have to wrap up <laughs> because of my internet connection. So maybe we like uh, focus on the, the, the very important one, the GSW. GSW means the stomatal conductance. Um, represent the pore size of stomata. It's one of very important character that relate to drought stress. 
and growth tolerance because stomata are the result of gut cell function which are regulated that can control water loss and carbon dioxide uptake by increase or decrease the size of stomata. But if we see only this, maybe we can see like a, a big difference between control and, and drought at level 305, but it like a different and it may be difficult to to use to adjust like a to to make a decision for for um irrigation for decision for irrigation but if we can collect data as the time series like this um as you can see here the sensitivity of so material conductance is better than that of morphology. We can see the reduction of stomato conductance on 24 and 25. Anyway, the morphology of this change as lipo at the level three on 26 and level five on 27. Therefore, it is possible to use plant physiology as a decision support data to make decision for irrigation, right? If we can like uh, investigate the st stomatal conductance, we can give water before the plant show some, some morphological ch change. Finally, if we can prove that alternative irrigation can reduce water consumption without deleterious effect to plant, we can raise public awareness about water efficiency and maybe also environmental friendly. All of these are things that government should publicize and educate farmers. In addition, the encouragement, the support and incentive are, are also needed for farmers to apply concretely if uh, like the farmer of us, mm, similar to some region as America, Japan, or Europe, maybe uh, support and is it incentive, uh, no need anyway. I think maybe the situation in our country are similar. The farmer uh, are not the rich people in the country, right? So I, I think if government want to use the alternative irrigation concretely, maybe the support and incentive are also needed for the farmer. The alternative irrigation not only decrease water consumption in the field level, but also assist the government in effecti effectively managing water as a whole in the particular during drought years when water supply is uh, insufficient for all activity. So that is the idea that I I think the water physiology and water, uh, sorry, plant physiology and plant stress maybe can help V to like a uh, decision when we should give water to the plant. Maybe we can save more water to do if we know some detail about plant physiology and plant stress. So sorry that the, my internet signal that not stable today and in, in the last so maybe I talk so fast and so brief. So we have one more hour because I I <laughs> I talk it so brief in, in the final. So we have one more hour if you have any question. Yeah, who have any question, you can ask the speaker.
Okay, uh, doctor, I have a question uh, related to the uh, water balance analysis. Uh, in your slide, you saw about the uh, percolations. So in Thailand, is there any uh, technology to measure uh, percolation or infiltration as such a thing? I don't, I, um, um, <laughs> I listen can, my, my, my listening is not clear. Maybe due to my internet connection, could, maybe you can, can, can you type the question in, in the chat box? Oh, okay. Okay. Doctor. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry so much. Any question? You can ask. Okay, now I, I see your question. How can you define the population rate in Thailand? Uh, I think some of um, I'm not sure that I I and I like uh, misunderstand your question or not. Um, the percolation rate. Did you mean like uh, the water that go in the soil, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we we'll share that slide again. This one, right? And and you know, and you you wanna add this. Is percolation right? Um, the technique <laughs> that we can use to to know the percolation, I uh, how to call it? I forget the name of the technique uh, that we use to to find the percolation rate. But I still do, I still do in my office. Like we have a tank, about 16 tanks with uh, the end of the tank and without. Mm. But <laughs> uh, anyway. Is half a technique like uh, to to um, to measure the water in the field, right? And and we can measure the water that go out by transpiration. So if we know the water input, and we know that that. The water that go out by evapotranspiration, uh, the other part of water is the percolation rate, and I'm not sure that we we have another uh, smart technology to do together with this technique or not. But I in my office we do like uh, the original one, like uh, the the. The process that we use to find the KC of plant and the the the, the, the like uh, the constant in plant use the, the water used in plant and anyway uh, the percolation rate is not stable 
uh, we cannot like uh, find one gem and use in every way, every time. Uh, I think everything of uh, the agriculture and environment become difficult because of it depend on the environment. <clears throat> everything <clears throat> that water loss, uh, transpiration, ev evaporation, and percolation also change when environment change. So I, I think it may be difficult to 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 find it as the technique in the past. But I think maybe the person that can like uh, clarify this question better than me is Dr. Song Sak that will be a speaker in next two days i'm not sure because he will come in here and talking about the smart uh, smart right smart 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 agriculture or smart farming or smart irrigation i'm not sure but i i think there is some new technology to to investigate all not only percolation but all uh, investigate transpiration invest Investigate evaporation and also investigate perforation, and uh, absolutely uh, investigate the precipitation. Um, and it, if we use that smart technique, maybe we can know this all of that at real time. But I'm I'm not sure about the perforation because when I when I do. <laughs> uh my experiment i now i still focus on the plant physiology so uh like uh, i i i use the plant response to decision when i want to watering or not so like uh, if there there are a lot of transpiration and a lot of percolation, but plant can still go good. I think maybe we can can wait and water after. Okay. Anyone has more question? Okay, you can leave in this box and then when he back. He can answer you. Okay, I think maybe better if I don't share the slide. It maybe consume a lot of uh, internet signal and it's still lost. Okay, uh, I think then... no more question now because I asked them and no one leave any question in the box. Okay, for today, thank you very much, Dr. Kitawat again for our lecture today. So uh, you can look at the, all of the recorded uh, video again in the Google Classroom. And or you have any question, more any question, you can ask, leave there, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, you can like a uh, leave if if after this session, if you have uh, some question to to ask, you can send the question in the Google Classroom. I, I think I I post like a two like a one of the presentation and one is the question that uh. Professor Chaisi asked me to give you some question and I, I leave it in the Google Classroom. So if you have any other question, you can like ask me in the Google Classroom and it will answer in there. Thank and, you very much to everyone. And before, we, and, and before we end the lecture, can we take photos together again? Please turn on your camera. Okay, one, two, three, capture, thank you. Okay, and 
you can join the lecture again tomorrow. Okay, good luck, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.